and as was mentioned earlier in the show, our first segment is focusing on the 20th anniversary of the State Partnership Program. We have a full house on set, as you can see, and joining us, we have the U.S. Ambassador to Belize, His Excellency Carlos Moreno. We're joined as well by Major Edison Ogaldez, who is uh, a part of the company of BDF Volunteers. We have uh, Major General Glenn Curtis of the Louisiana Army, and we have Brigadier General David Jones of the BDF. Good morning, gentlemen, Good morning. and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. So this is a celebratory time. Uh, I think uh, being able to achieve major anniversaries is a time to be able to reflect and of course always plan ahead. So I want to start off and I'll ask you Ambassador to be able to kind of give an overview uh, in terms of achieving 20 years of this partnership and some of the major highlights from your perspective. All right, indeed. Uh, good morning, uh, Marlene. It's a pleasure uh, to be here uh, today for this uh, momentous occasion, the 20th anniversary of the partnership between the Louisiana National Guard mm -hmm. and the Belize Defense uh, Force. I'm here really in a supportive uh, role. Uh, I'm very proud that uh, the national, state National Guards throughout the country mm -hmm. have established uh, relationships with uh, foreign uh, armed forces. And here we are celebrating uh, this morning and this week the 20th anniversary between the Louisiana National Guard and the Belize uh, Defense Force, and includes the, the Coast Guard as well as NEMO and other related uh, agencies. Essentially, the partnership uh, is one that involves uh, national disaster preparation, uh, regional activity in terms of uh, uh, responding to regional uh, disasters, uh, also medical responses and helping uh, and training uh, uh, BDF uh, soldiers in terms of uh, appropriate medical responses in the field. Mm -hmm. uh, engineering, uh, the uh, Louisiana National Guard has assisted and worked with in partnership with the Belize uh, Defense Force in uh, renovating schools and improving other uh, infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And indeed, uh, the mutual training involves uh, jungle welfare, mm -hmm. warfare uh, training, uh, so it's really a true partnership between the two countries where uh, expertise is shared in kind uh, between both uh, partners. Yeah. And from the Belize perspective? Well, um, this is a momentous occasion. Um, mm -hmm. This partnership started in 1996 um, under General Artis at the time, um, who, who was the commander of BDF, who had the partnership started, which was 20 years ago. It's a long time. I was just uh, junior officer at the time and it has grown um, tremendously to the point where it is now. We've had a lot of exchange of training um, and cooperative um, engagement with the Louisiana National Guard and I think from since then every year um, the Belize Defense Force have been visiting Louisiana, um, having meetings, having um, conferences with them and we plan training in advance and we plan cooperative agreements that we have. So they've assisted us with um, training for BDF soldiers in regards to transport, uh, force protection, which is our force police style, military police training uh, we've gotten from them. Engineering in particular, uh, we've got some of their engineers working with us to the point where they've been doing construction here in Belize now. Um, they've just worked on our new um, entrance gate at Price Barracks. So when you go to Price Barracks now, you'll see a new entrance gate that has been constructed courtesy of the assistance and cooperation we have with the Louisiana Army National Guard. Um, we've sent our soldiers over to, and our volunteer officers in particular, because when the partnership was started, it was made mainly for our volunteer soldiers who would benefit. So apart from their soldiers, our volunteer officers, we tried to get them trained over in the U.S. Um, through the Louisiana Army National Guard, where our officers are commissioned based on the courses that they do at the Officer Candidate School over in the United States. Um, it has grown tremendously. Um, it has reached a point where we, we are more than friends. We're, we're like brothers working together. We're so much integrated with the Louisiana Army National Guard that um, it, it's, it's so natural when we're, we're together. When we go to Louisiana, they host us. And in particular, not just the work, but uh, we, we do have fun times as well. <laughs> because we try to plan the activities in Louisiana where we're there for Mardi Gras. Oh. 
so we get to be um, Do we get a to part talk of the about those stories too. <laughs> well, well, you cannot. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> you may not get all the answers. <laughs> but disaster relief is a big yes. thing that we get from them because um, they have so much experience in the U.S., especially with Katrina that had hit the U.S. Yes. some years ago. Um, they they were leading agency working and rehabilitating what was happening. And if you look at the results from what Katrina did to, to where it is now, with the assistance that Louisiana Army National Guard provided, we have been learning a lot from them. Uh, we send our operations officer over to Louisiana to attend the conferences, and the, we look at new ways and means of how to respond to disasters. Okay. Uh, because of the tremendous experiences that they've had, and the operational center that they have, they, they have a huge operational center there. We have developed one here in Belize, which we have patterned and we're, we're learning things from them, so we're implementing them here now in Belize. Um, so the, the partnership is strong to the point where we've also um, added the Coast Guard to benefit from the training. So when members of the Louisiana National Guard come to Belize and provide any expert training, um, we, have, we invite the Coast Guard as well. Mm -hmm. One of the big things that we're trying to gain more knowledge from is something that Belize is trying to establish, a youth challenge program mm -hmm. for, for youths that are, are delinquent and or committing crime or about to get into the mm -hmm. criminal cycle. Um, they have an excellent program running in Louisiana for some years and um, uh, General Curtis will more be able to elaborate on it. Um, but we have been learning from them what is expected to run such a facility that would assist our youths in particular what we're going through now in Belize City with urban crime. Mm -hmm. um, they've, they've got a tremendous establishment of what they have been doing and they've seen great success rates so um, in the future, we're hoping that we can pattern oh. a facility here in Belize that would emulate what they have in Louisiana. Yeah, that's, that sounds uh, like something to work towards. I, I want to bring uh, General Curtis into the conversation here. And I, I think from your perspective, one of the things I wanted to look at is a, a partnership uh, that is established over the course of 20 years. Oftentimes, there's a set mandate coming in uh, in the beginning. and what tends to happen is you come and you see the landscape and you identify different needs or perhaps different priorities. How would you describe uh, the shift in the partnerships over the past 20 years and how those uh, priority areas are decided upon? Yeah. Well, first off, uh, thank you for having us here this morning. We are very excited uh, for this 20 year anniversary. And you're exactly right. When this thing started 20 years ago, it was a very formal relationship. We did not know each other very well. And uh, so it, it, it was subject matter exchanges on very specific items. And so as we've grown, uh, David and I probably met each other 12, 14 years ago, I guess. I don't know, we were both young officers. And so, it, so it's this relationship that he, that he described where it, it, you know, it's like the BDF saying shoulder to shoulder. Uh, so we work on issues that are uh, important to the BDF, but also issues that are important to Louisiana National Guard. And for me, um, you know, one of the highlights for us was in 2010 after the earthquake in Haiti. Haiti is our other partner country. Uh, the BDF sent the light engineer company with us to Haiti to do humanitarian relief. And that to me speaks volumes about a relationship that we had enough trust in each other that um, the, the, the country of Belize would allow them to deploy with us. Um, David talked about the Youth Challenge Program it is, in the state of Louisiana, it is a gem. I mean, it's, uh, we take um, youth between the ages of 16 and 18, they've dropped out of high school, and they're at risk. Uh, so they've had brushes with the law uh, in most cases. It's a volunteer program. They come and stay with us for five and a half months. Um, during that five and a half months, um, we have military personnel that we call cadre um, that it, it, it runs like a like a basic training or a boot camp environment um, where they do physical fitness and, and they learn to say yes ma'am and no ma'am and yes sir and no sir. But then they go into a classroom during the day and we put them through a rigorous program where they can get basically their high school diploma. But we also give them a lot of life coping skills. Uh, for the first time in their lives, a lot of them are, are understanding what it is from, to do right from wrong. And when they, when they do wrong, they, they get discipline for it. Um, so, so it is a tremendous program. Um, we graduate over 1,400 kids a year in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. 
our high school dropout rate is about 16 to 18,000. So we, so we get to you know, a little bit less than 10% of them. But our success rate, we follow them for one year after they graduate. Our success rate is around 85%, and we define success one of three ways. They either join the military, mm -hmm. they're in school, college or, or, or voc tech school, or they have a full-time job where they are producing a paycheck, and we follow up and make sure that that's happening. And so for 22 years now, I guess, we run that program, and that success rate has been right around 85%. So, so it, you really take a young man or woman that's headed in the wrong direction and, and are able to turn their life around and, and, and really give them an opportunity to fulfill their dreams. So this has been an ident identified uh, area yeah. that you now look to work towards? Yeah. Well, in it, it, in, yes. Including building a yeah. facility? Yes. Um, well, we've, look, we've got a facility already up at the Mountain Pine Ridge area um, at okay. the De Silva mm -hmm. Camp. Um, it's just a matter of okay. waiting for the legal authority for us as military personnel to, to run the facility. Mm -hmm. But we want to emulate it similar to what is happening in Louisiana. Yeah. And so whatever products we have, the things that we've learned over time, our instructional material, mm -hmm. the way that we deal with the youth, because um, uh, we, we don't, we're not allowed to put our hands on or anything like that. Um, well, I, I was going to ask you to clarify discipline, don't worry. Yeah. Well, you know, discipline for them turns into push-ups or, okay. or running or, you know, that type of thing. But we don't lay our, we don't lay our hands on them at There's all. There's no physical force no, involved. No. Yeah. And, and it's a voluntary program. They can leave any time they choose to leave. They can, they can walk out. And your retention rate? Um, we normally, so we run six cycles a year with about 250 kids uh, in two of the programs and two in the other one. We'll start out, if it's a 250 uh, person class, we normally start out with about 300 or 320. Mm -hmm. And then we'll graduate probably 250, 260. Mm -hmm. so, so they choose to stay. And what we've learned or what we've seen over this 20 something years we've been doing it is we get a lot of brothers and sisters that come or nieces and nephews so it's it's word of mouth yeah. it's people that, that went through 10 15 20 years ago that now are sending you know that their yeah. their siblings or, or their their children to the program so before we continue with the looking forward let's let's mm -hmm. step back a bit and okay. get uh, major ogaldes in here major ogaldes let's talk about some of the trainings or projects that you've been involved in uh, as a part of the partnership? Thanks, Marlene. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm the new battalion commander for the volunteer element. Mm -hmm. um, from when I was the deputy, if you will, uh, we've conducted joint trainings. Uh, we have an annual camp, and uh, we've had specialists from the Louisiana National Guard join us to, to prepare training for our, for our folks. Mm -hmm. uh, they experience um, our field life in Belize, yeah. and uh, we also send officers to, to Louisiana to get training. Now, we oftentimes have the perspective of those who come for jungle uh, mm -hmm. warfare right? training. Um, so we get to hear what it's like for people who perhaps have never been in the jungle and to be able to function in, in that environment. Let's flip it on the other side. What is the experience like for the Belizeans who travel to Louisiana for their training uh, in terms of the intensity, the level of knowledge gained, and just the cultural experience in itself? Our folks adopt uh, quite easily. Mm -hmm. um, Louisiana, uh, the state of Louisiana has um, terrain similar, if you will, to, to parts of Belize. Mm -hmm. And our folks adapt um, real quickly and, yeah. do, and do well. Tell me about one of your, your memorable experiences in your training. Not the Mardi Gras one. We won't <laughs> go there. Yeah. Don't worry about that. Yeah, that's classified. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> it would be for me too. Don't worry. <laughs> I haven't actually been to Louisiana to do that sort of training. Okay. I've, I've only been to um, conferences and, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we've sent uh, people to become officers over there, mm -hmm. but I haven't uh, been to that part. Okay. Um, because I was qualified elsewhere. Okay. Yeah. And what have you seen as uh, the marked changes between the officers who go and when they come back? What's the difference in terms of the, the capacity level that you see when they come back? They're very good. They, mm -hmm. they're, they're able to lead better. They're able to train people better. Uh, they, they're entirely new, new, new people when they return. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, we take them when, when a BDF soldier comes or an officer comes to train with us. We plug them straight into our units. You know, they, they I tell them all the time, they eat with us, they sleep with us, they train with us, so, so um, they're just incorporated into that unit or into that, that training unit yeah. uh, so that they get the full experience. And when we go to the field and it's hot and sweaty, they're going to be in the field hot and sweaty with us. So that's just the way it is. Now, uh, uh, generals, yeah, it's the first time I've been on a program with two generals. Really? Uh, <laughs> but my understanding is that uh, uh, the Louise National Guard has an officer's training school that yeah. uh, yes. BDF soldiers uh, have attended. So yes, there's a certain. We've sent officers there. Yeah. All right. Now, and, and that's, that's a great point because I think one of the areas that I would find interesting is that there are cultural differences in yeah. terms of. Uh, how the National Guard in Louisiana would function and the Belize Defense Force, and we are always working towards bettering or making our force more professional. But there are also limitations in terms of resources. What you have access to, we don't have access to. So how do you train them to be able to cope within the Belizean environment, understanding that the context is going to be distinctly different? When we send our soldiers to Belize to train, mm -hmm. you're talking about? No, when, when, when the Belizean uh, officers go to your, your training academy. I, I, would, I would tell you from my perspective, I don't see where we, we treat them a lot different. I mean, we mm -hmm. bring them in. There, there will be equipment differences mm -hmm. that, that we need to give them the equipment that we train with mm -hmm. so that everybody's carrying the same rifle, everybody's carrying the same packs, etc. cetera. Um, but other than that, you know, the course of instruction is pretty much the same mm -hmm. from, from my perspective. Yeah, it won't be much of a, a difference the, the little difference would be cultural difference. If there's okay. things culturally that is done in Louisiana that is different from Belize. Uh, but when it comes to the training, uh, it is all that is expected of them. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to be training with more resources than they have here in the Belize Defense Force. That is, of course. Yeah. Um, so they try to use their knowledge that they have gained with the resources that they've been training with and then bring it back to Belize mm -hmm. and make the Belize Defense Force a better unit to train. Yeah. But when they go over there to Louisiana, um, they adapt very well, they adapt quickly, and they learn well. There's difference in, in temperature as well because at times it will get pretty cold, which they're not used to here in Belize. Mm -hmm. So they've got to adapt to that as well and, um, and to blend in and be a soldier just as the, the U.S. soldiers would, would train there because they've got to do exactly everything that is expected of a U.S. soldier, they are expected to. And it's similar when the U.S. soldiers and members of the Louisiana Army National Guard comes here to Belize. Um, there is a change for them, in particular if they have to do jungle training. Mm -hmm. That's different um, because the, the forest and the woods that they would do their training in, in Louisiana is totally different from our jungles here in Belize. Yeah. Because we have, we have a lot deal. of nasty insects and snakes <laughs> right. here in Belize that right. they've got to be aware of yeah. and they've got to adapt. But we, we take them in and they they adapt pretty well as well and mm -hmm. at the end of our training that the the ones have gone through the jungle training they really enjoyed it they mm -hmm. said it's a wonderful experience and it's something that they want to continue and we're going to welcome them whenever we are in that phase mm -hmm. for them to come to belize and do jungle training with us uh, okay. because if you can live and train in the jungle you can yeah. live and operate anywhere in the world you know, the general raises an interesting point something that uh, i know uh, as the ambassador here i'm very concerned and interested in uh, medical care mm -hmm. and the general talks about the hostile environment uh, in the jungle and uh, part of that training as I understand it is appropriate medical responses yes. for incidents that might occur in the jungle and Louisiana does bring uh, medical supplies and kits mm. leaves them with the uh, with the soldiers I'm I'm very concerned about uh, Belizean soldiers who have to struggle out and learn survival skills mm -hmm. Uh, in the jungle and always facing the imminent danger of you know, being bitten or breaking a leg or so forth. So I think that part of the exchange is, is very, very important. Yes. Part of our, our relationship is to continue to professionally develop our organizations, the BDF, Louisiana National Guard. And so when Joan Jones and I get together with our staffs and do the planning, we look at a multitude of things. And so we've worked on personnel databases, maintenance of vehicles, the medical piece. Mm -hmm. uh, we looked at emergency preparedness. Um, he's allowed us in the last couple of years, we've come down and done the jungle training with them. They send their NCOs, their officers up to train with us. So, so it's really an ongoing conversation between the two 
entities about how to, what are the things that we see that we can help each other with. And then we plan those and we execute them and uh, that relationship just continues to grow. So looking back uh, over the past 20 years, let, what would you say are some of the hallmarks of this partnership? The, the one that always I'll come back to is, is when the BDF engineering company went to Haiti with us. Okay. Because that, that to me, you've, you've gone beyond just a, a um, exchange program. It, it is now kind of brother to brother, you know, family relationship almost that, that the BDF, the country of Belize, had enough trust in Louisiana and its leadership to send its soldiers with us mm -hmm. into, into a, a bad situation. Um, we deployed together. Uh, they built schools. They drilled water wells. I mean, they did all the humanitarian relief efforts that, mm -hmm. that were asked of us from the country of Haiti. Yeah. And so to me, that, that was kind of a, uh, you know, a culmin not a culminating point, but a, a highlight yeah. of our relationship that we had that much trust in each other to deploy to another country together. And for me, it's the same. Uh, that deployment that the Belize Defense was did to Haiti um, is an experience that um, we have been using for, for the time that we've had after that because it's not often that members of the Belize Defense Force get to deploy overseas to do any training or any um, humanitarian relief or disasters. We've done it before on smaller scales in some of the Caribbean islands um, where we would send three, four, five, or but in this case we had sent a rotation of uh, three different platoons, so an entire company uh, went to Haiti uh, when they were devastated by the earthquake and our engineers were able to show their skills and they gained the respect of the members of the Louisiana National Guard and the members of the other forces who were deployed in Haiti, working to rehabilitate back that country. Um, the soldiers came back with vast experience, mm. um, very fond memories of working uh, with the Louisiana Army National Guard. And they, they came with a sense of achievement in that they can deploy out of the country yeah. and do something good for another country. Mm. And importantly, with a partner that you can trust, you can work with, and where you can see tangible benefits of a, yeah. of a partnership that was developed years ago to reach a culminating point where you can deploy to a foreign country, work together and achieve something for the common good for the, for the entire region. Yeah. And I think deployment even in, mm -hmm. within the country of Belize, I think uh, with respect to uh, natural disaster preparedness, mm -hmm. I think the BDF has engaged with the National Guard. Was it in, in April and June of this year or last year that mm -hmm. There were uh, respective meetings in Louisiana and here, yeah. yes. and then we have uh, Hurricane Earl Hurricane here Earl. Yep. Mm -hmm. in August that is sort of the real thing, the real yes. deal. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's the other part of our relationship is it's grown beyond just a military to military relationship. We get involved in a lot of other things that, that the country believes asks us to get involved in and help yeah. either train or, or try to come up with solution sets like mm -hmm. emergency preparedness. We do a big exercise every year in Louisiana and, and Belize comes to it for the last, I think, three or four years, they've been sending people. And we send our folks down here yeah. to help them. So. Now, Ambassador, looking at this particular partnership and in terms of uh, the role that the embassy plays in ensuring that uh, it is sustained and nurtured and that there is an environment that allows for a type of partnership mm -hmm. to, to continue and grow, uh, what is that like from, from your end? Well, you know, from, from my end, I think uh, I'll just draw one example. Yeah. Uh, and I'm very intrigued by the uh, youth program mm -hmm. at the Louisiana National Guard. I didn't realize it had been in existence for many, many years. Uh, but as you know, one of the platforms of our embassy is a citizen security and working with at-risk youth. And I think I've been in, on this program mm -hmm. talking about the various uh, grants that we provide to various NGOs that work on the issue of getting at the roots of crime, dealing with at-risk youth, and so forth. I think that what we've learned uh, from the two generals is that this is yet another alternative that, that might work. So yeah. I, I would uh, really encourage uh, Belize, whether it's the Ministry of Education or Human Development, uh, to consider this, this yeah. alternative. Because I think for some youth, uh, particularly males, but also yeah. females, this might provide the necessary kind of education and discipline that in one's uh, early years might steer at-risk youth away from crime and unemployment yeah. and so forth. So as an ambassador interested in citizen security and, and furthering and sharing 
our values, I think it's, it's, it's something that ought to be seriously considered. Yeah. And at what phase, obviously now mm -hmm. looking forward, at what phase are you in terms of looking at uh, the at-risk youth program? Well, we're at the stage where we've, we've got the facility. Okay. Um, there's a bit more refurbishment that needs to be done. One, so it's a camp? One, one, yes, it uh -huh. is. Uh, the, the, the legal issue is the, is the only thing that is restricting us from starting now. Mm -hmm. Because we've, we've got the resources for the kids to start. We, we've received some resources from the Louisiana Army National Guard mm -hmm. um, for, for the kids to be in uniform and to have them accommodated and ready to start the program. Uh, what we also need is the, our social partners um, to agree to have the military be a part of this program. Okay. Um, I think it's critical that the military is part of the program. Um, and that's where they need to accept that it's going to be a good factor if the military okay. is involved because of the discipline that we bring to the, to the table. Well, there's always a sensitivity when working with children. Um, mm -hmm. And I think uh, definitely there is a lot that needs to be done in helping mm -hmm. to get uh, at-risk youths back on track. What is the level of training that you guys have undergone or exposure to the Louisiana program in terms of being able to create or emulate a program here in country? Okay, we've, uh, we've sent some of our officers and soldiers to Louisiana mm -hmm. um, for, a, for a few years now to go and have a look at the program. They spent a couple of weeks with them. Yeah. They, they blend in with the instructors. They look at the instruction that they give to the, to the kids. Um, they've gone into the classroom to see what is being taught, and they're, they're being taught um, things that they would be taught in school, maths, English, mm -hmm. um, science, and we want to do the same, where we would get teachers um, into the program. We'd like to get, have psychologists, um, counselors, doctors, uh, medics, mm -hmm. so that any eventuality that can happen in a, in a facility, we've got the respective social partner that can take care of it. Yeah. Uh, we won't be there for the educational upliftment for the, for the students, um, but we will have our civilian counterparts do that. Mm -hmm. um, all military will bring to the table the organization and the discipline to ensure that the kids, um, they have their place tidy, they, they're up at a certain time in the morning, they're at the right place at the right time every day throughout the, throughout the day, and um, the education and counseling portion is done by yeah. professionals. That's not our expertise, yeah. so we have that to the civilians. Yeah. Um, so we're prepared to have that program start, but I guess there are some legal issues where our Chief Justice would need to, um, to pass down to our, yeah. to our ministers that, okay, this is how it can be done and these are the parameters that the military can be a part of it and then we can work with that mandate. And you'd also like a voluntary program similar to what you see uh, would, in Louisiana? Yes, it would be a similar program. So we've got officers that have been to their program to look at it. I have visited the facility um, and a number of times mm -hmm. and I was sold. When I, when I saw the program, yeah. um, when General Curtis um, allowed me to visit the facility, we, we've been there mm -hmm. and I've seen more than one of the camps that they've got there and I, I was sold in the program. Mm -hmm. I knew it's going to be good for Belize because there is a cycle of violence here in Belize that if you don't intervene, that cycle will just go perpetual for, for years mm -hmm. to come if you don't do something about it. Mm -hmm. And I, I strongly believe that this is one of the interventions that can happen that we should emulate and make sure it comes to Belize. Yeah. Uh, uh, just to reemphasize a couple of points that he made, um, we, have, we have professionals guiding these kids through the program. Yeah. So we have professional counselors that are licensed. We have medical professionals that take care of them medically. We have professional teachers educated that do the education piece. The military in, in Louisiana just provides that organizational piece yeah. and the physical fitness and, and then any of the any of the discipline that would take place. But again, yeah. it's not no hands on. It, yeah. It's push-ups, set-ups, running, yeah. that type of thing. So. And, you know, I, I think there's, there's enough research to show that routines help children to right. be able to, uh, to have a more productive lives. And yes. sometimes that's what they need. Yes. Uh, obviously, you guys have your mandate set out in terms of what's next after the 20 years. And this seems to be uh, one of the, the main areas you want to focus on at this point. Let me just ask one question in terms of... Maybe we need to, to sell it a bit to, to the social partners that you yes, want to, to get the recommendation from. Where do you see the turning point with these children? What happens over the course of five and a half months yeah. that m takes them from a path of making decisions that are detrimental to their lives mm -hmm. to recognizing that there is another alternative? I, I think a lot of it has to do with the structure. Mm -hmm. Because we, it is a very disciplined program. Yeah. They get up every morning 
at 5, 5.30. They can go out and do physical fitness for, for a lot of them, first time they've actually done physical fitness. Uh, and then they eat, they eat meals, they have very structured, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it is a, it is a, I don't call it tough love, but it is a little bit of a tough love environment because for the first time they're held accountable for their actions. Mm -hmm. If they do something good, they get positive reinforcement. Mm -hmm. If they do something that's against the rules, th then they get discipline uh, and, and they get that corrective action taken. Yeah. Um, the, the other big piece of it is our counselors are able to give them coping skills. Mm -hmm. uh, they have to sit down and write basically their own constitution, if you will, set their own goals, short-term, long-term goals, um, and, and we give them a roadmap when they leave that they hopefully will execute. Uh, one of the other keys to our success is after our programs are with, we identify them, identify for them mentors, life mentors, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's someone in their family, you know, an aunt, an uncle, or whatever, or just someone that's a positive influence that after they graduate from our program, they will stay with them. They have a copy of these goals that they've set. And so they will work with them into the future and, and I will tell you, because I know some of them that, are, that graduated 15 years ago, their mentors are still their mentors, exactly. even, even because it's become a, a, a true relationship. Yes. So the youth facility is definitely in the pipeline in terms of yes. what you're working towards. Yeah. Any other areas that you're looking to explore uh, after we celebrate the 20th anniversary? Well, it'll be more um, engineering projects. Okay. Um, we'd like them to come and assist us in Belize to um, because we, we have uh, some old infrastructure at Price Brax and some of the other um, bases that we'd like them to continue to partner with us because they've, they've just been here with us a couple of weeks ago doing some engineering project and we'd like to see that continue mm -hmm. and we'd like to see more joint training for members of the Air Force come to Belize not just jungle training but other conventional training and, um, and also training that will benefit us as mm -hmm. a force and training that will get, gain them more experience abroad to do training. So the, the cooperation is going to increase um, even with um, aviation because they we've got two helicopters and mm -hmm. they have some expertise they can provide um, to assist us okay. because it's a it's a game changer for us because um, those helicopters are going to play a major role in our jungle warfare training mm -hmm. uh, for medical evacuation and they have some expertise in it so we're going to continue that partnership because we we're elevating the, the, the sort of resources that the BDF um, no have and we're also extending this partnership even bigger bringing in the Coast Guard with us okay. so they will start to benefit from this training as well uh, and in the emergency preparedness please yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and on the softer side I think mm -hmm. there's been a relationship between the Louisiana National Guard uh, band yeah. and the Belize yes. uh, Youth yeah. Orchestra and the BDF oh. uh, Orchestra in terms of uh, lessons and training and I even believe some donation of instruments uh, mm -hmm. in the past so that's also something that uh, I think is a good thing for the, for, for the past and for the future. And looking forward. Yeah. Well, congratulations on your uh, 20th anniversary. How do you celebrate a 20th anniversary of what a partnership? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, there's going to be a parade. A parade. Okay, That's there we go. This evening. There has um, to be something to so celebrate. So there's going to be a huge parade this evening okay. at Price Works. Uh -huh. uh, we would like to welcome members of the public or members of the media in particular okay. to come and cover that parade. Um, what going, time is it? It's at 4 o'clock this uh -huh. evening. Okay. Um, so we have that parade this evening and after the parade we have a, we have a dinner, a formal dinner that we're going to host them um, and we're going to socialize with them and have some food and drinks and talk about I the I see General Curtis smiling when you mentioned the food. <laughs> you're, you're used to the rice and beans by now. That's excellent. So, so we're looking forward to this parade this evening to celebrate this 20th anniversary and importantly um, I can have General Curtis um, elaborate more on this we reciprocate that parade in louisiana two oh. days after right so we fly to louisiana to have a similar parade um to commemorate the event okay yeah. so, so it's a, tell us about the celebrations in louisiana well, louisiana will be uh, much the same uh -huh. we'll have a parade on our parade field uh, to celebrate the 20 years our governor will be there governor mm -hmm. edwards will be there um and then that evening we will have a we'll have a formal dinner and do some presentations so uh, it's, uh, it, it's 20 years, but it's a mark on the wall because I'm looking forward to the next 20 years All right. of great. our relationship. And we look forward to seeing the work done with the youth facility. That really is a great initiative. Yeah. Hopefully yes. we get the buy-in that you need for that. Yes. Thank you so much for coming in and sharing uh, what you have been able to accomplish over the past 20 years and definitely hearing 
the strength of the relationship that you guys are determined to do even more uh, in the next 20 years. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks for having us. All right. We're going to go ahead and take a break. And when we come back, we'll be talking about geospatial engineering. So stay tuned.